I know that most videos with a question in the title promise to give you an answer if you just stick until the end of the video. And my intention here is to simply share my experience and hope that it will help someone. So let me tell you uh, my opinion right off the bat. I believe that most people are right in saying that a PhD in architecture and many other professions is worth only if you plan to stay in the academia. And after finishing my PhD almost 12 years ago now, I am of the same opinion. If you plan to be a professor or generally work at the university, eventually it does make some sense to do it. However, I did not stay in the academia and I think that in my case it was still worth it. Why? Well, just because of the title in front of the name? No, not because of that. And uh, that is a very bad reason to do it. And it's not worth the years of struggle. So if that's on your mind, trust me, your title will not matter. Only your knowledge will matter. And we are past the time of titles, I think. So I kind of gave you an answer, but if you want to hear the details of my story and why it was worth it for me, then you'll have to stick around. Great. If you follow this channel and my our work, you might know that I have a PhD from Stuttgart University in Germany. So if you come from the parametric design world, you probably heard of Professor Akin Menges and his Institute for Computational Design. And you might have seen a lot of those cool pavilions made in front of our building. What you might not know is that most of them are made in collaboration between uh, the two institutes, ICD and ITKE, as you would pronounce them in German and the translation of ITKE being Institute of Building Structures and Structural Design, at the head of which, uh, which is Professor Jan Knippers, my PhD mentor. So Professor Knippers is a civil engineer, as were most of the researchers at that, and PhD students at that institute. And he worked with the famous Professor Jörg Schleich, and he is a part of that incredible chain of world famous lightweight structural engineering, all gathered in the Stuttgart area for some reason, including Professor Fry Otto and his successor, Professor Werner Zobeck. And that was really important for me, this history of technical excellence there and me trying to be a small part of that. So I finished architecture, but I was always inclined more towards structural engineering. So I wanted to do a PhD that would lead me down that path. And an important fact is that my PhD was the old fashioned one, right? No lectures or exams as I see to be common nowadays. Just me, the subject and my mentor. And the result of my PhD was basically a software. So a Rhino plugin that used a finite element method static analysis software to perform statical optimization of free form grid shells. So I was working in parallel the whole time, which was awesome because I got to apply and test a lot of the things I was developing at the Knippers Helbig office, where we dealt with a lot of freeform grid shells. So I finished the PhD within four and a half years, one day shy of my 29th birthday in 2011. And we live in a time where people rightly ask the question, is it worth going to college at all? Especially when you have to pay a lot of tuition for it, like in the United States. And a lot of successful people dropped out of college and uh, famous investor Peter Thiel even incentivizes people to do that by offering them money to drop out and start a company. But that is a slightly separate subject that I will maybe cover in another video. In this, we're talking about the step after college. So I as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do not think you need a PhD in architecture if you're going to actually practice it. I mean, if someone just gave it to you, that would be nice, but otherwise you will lose a couple of years of very, very valuable practice and miss on the experience you would gather. So consciously or subconsciously, I also knew that, but I chose to ignore it for two reasons. Even though I generally planned to have my own office as soon as possible, I thought I would be able to follow the, the academic path as well, right? Do that very cool combination of being a professor and having my own office. So spoiler alert, I did not succeed in doing that. Two, I wanted the PhD just to boost my ego and put that title in front of my name, which as I mentioned is a ridiculous reason. So how come it was all worth it for me then? Well, it was, but for none of the two reasons. I did not succeed to enter the academia, although I tried for the first couple of years after finishing my PhD, and I really did not see any benefit from the title. On the contrary, people see you as uh, overqualified sometimes, which can be a, a downside in business, or sometimes have, uh, they have higher expectations of you, which is also a subject of one of the videos I will made uh, that I will call knowledge shaming. But anyway, back on the track, why was it worth it for me? Well. Here is the main reason and the same at the same time my advice to you if you are in a similar situation. 
it was worth it because I used it as a second college. If I have chosen to deepen my knowledge in some area that I have already semi-mastered, but now I wanted to perfect, I don't know if that would have much value. But I was an architect and in four and a half years, I suddenly became a C++ programmer with a large knowledge in static analysis and structural design. So it was literally a second course of studies. In 2011, I was not an architect specialized in a small area of architecture. I was equipped with a combination, a cool combination, I would say, of knowledge in architecture, engineering and programming. And this unique combination kind of enabled me to find my own niche and start my own company. So if you use your further studies to reinvent yourself, to not move that much vertically, but horizontally and add several skill sets to your initial degree, uh, thus making a perfect cocktail that will make you have a unique combination of expertise, then I would say it is totally worth it. Then you can see it as another master course where you have more control over what you want to do. Of course, I mentioned I worked the entire time and that is something I would absolutely recommend as well. Whether you decide to stay in the academia or not, dealing with real life problems in the building industry will be invaluable to you. And if you are a future professor, I really want you to teach the students useful and applicable things. And you will be able to do it by experiencing the problems we have on a daily basis and the solutions that we have to come up with. So that's my story and my two cents. With so much free knowledge and AI being able to replace a lot of our work, I think that academic institutions have never been more unstable. And I think it is fair to predict that many of them will start to collapse if they do not reinvent themselves to some degree. Now, I do not wish that on them and I truly hope they will manage to survive. But for you, my final piece of advice, PhD or no PhD, college or no college, knowledge is what counts. So the world needs honesty and hiding behind diplomas and degrees is really counterproductive. Whether you decide to pursue a degree at an official institution or try learning from YouTube on your own, Try to understand what you're learning and use that to make yourself unique and useful to yourself and to the world. As Naval Ravikant would say, productize yourself. Stay free. You're still here? Well, let me give you some bonus thoughts. Would I recommend people to do a PhD today in any scenario, even if they want to stay in the academia? Well, I don't think so. I don't think that any degree will matter soon. I think that the universities as we know them will at worst disappear and at best evolve into something completely different. Good luck competing with free online learning and GPTs 4, 5, 6 and uh, subsequent ones. So Neil deGrasse Tyson said, the system values your grade more than the student values learning. That's the only reason students cheat, because the system values your grade more than the student values learning. So the system is bad. Degrees and grades make absolutely no sense anymore. I would always hire someone or work with a person that quit school at 10 but knows what they're doing than with a person who has three PhDs and doesn't really. Only knowledge counts and nowadays knowledge is free and detached from degrees. So all you need to do is want it and take it. Stay free.